I just hope that the family heals. I know it'll take a while, but I hope that they have a good support system. Tonight, communities and officers across the Ozarks are devastated about the loss of a missing man and his two children. The Benton County Sheriff ruled the deaths a murder-suicide. Michael Van Skoik live at the Sheriff's Office with a look at the way people are grieving tonight. Yeah, Paul and Maria, this tragedy has struck the hearts of so many people across the Ozarks and really the state as a whole. Many of those people holding out that the three would be returned home safely. Several are still distraught by this incident, including law enforcement and families who say they've seen their own children in both Mason and Caden. I have a five-year-old and a three-year-old little boy, little boys and... I just feel for their family. Tonight, an ordinary wooden shed now poses as a solemn memorial. Flowers lie around it, remembering the lives lost. You never think it's going to happen around where you live, and it does. <laughs> so. And for some, like Rebecca Davis, Mason and Caden brought along thoughts of their own children. I automatically thought if it were them, you know, or my fiance with them. And from the sounds of it, he was a good, a good man and a good dad. The outcome has also left its mark with those who worked so hard to find them. I didn't sleep last night. And, and I would imagine, you know, everybody, including the, the, the individuals that discovered uh, the deceased, probably didn't sleep either. And uh, it, it goes home with you at the end of the day. Daryl Peak had a history of depression and suicidal thoughts. What can we sort of learn from this situation? Society lets these people down. We do not have the proper mechanisms in place to deal with mental illness anymore. And at the state level, I think there needs to be more help for mental illness. And while these flowers continue to sit along this somber spot, others hope the message behind them lets family know many truly are thinking of them. I just hope that it helps the family in some way. It's been an absolutely emotional, draining time for several people in the community. And many of you have been asking why there was no Amber Alert issued in this specific case. That is something that we're looking into. We've reached out to Missouri State Highway Patrol to learn more about this. We'll have that story for you tomorrow night at 9 o'clock and 10 o'clock. Live in Warsaw, I'm Michael Van Skoik. It's a question many of you have been asking. Tonight, we're taking a closer look at why an Amber Alert did not go out when a Pleasant Hope father vanished with his two boys. A work crew found Daryl Peak and his boys Mason and Caden there dead in Warsaw this week. Tonight, Michael Van Skoik is live from Troop D headquarters to look at some of the factors that kept an Amber Alert from being issued. Maria and Paul, it was 16 hours after Daryl Peak left his home that authorities were notified to be on the lookout for them, but that was not an Amber Alert. Now, Peak and his sons were found in Warsaw in what the sheriff there believes to be a murder-suicide. Any and every lead that comes in, we're following, we're uh, exhausting this investigation in every way we know how. The Greene County Sheriff's Office says it asked several times for an Amber Alert to be issued. While no one with the Missouri State Highway Patrol would do an on-camera interview, the agency issued this statement saying the disappearance did not meet the requirements for the activation of an Amber Alert. Requirements for issuing an Amber Alert include timely requests. As more time goes by, the usefulness of an alert diminishes and parental disputes don't apply unless there's a concern that a child could be harmed. Peak had a history of depression and suicidal thoughts. A lot of people are concerned, why doesn't that merit an Amber Alert? But my understanding is the family, either the wife or a family member, uh, went on the air and said that he would never hurt his children. So my mindset is, is the family didn't think that he would ever do something like that. Therefore, it doesn't meet the criteria of an Amber Alert. And if authorities did fear he would cause harm? Would that, I guess, then change things? Yes, yeah, I believe it would have. And again, I can't speak for, you know, for their people, but 
uh, if you meet all the criteria of the Amber Alert, there's no reason they couldn't do one. The Greene County Sheriff's Office previously told us after their attempts. We would definitely like for this issue to meet the criteria for an Amber Alert. But at the same time, we realize that criteria is in place for a reason. After this case, Sheriff Knox says many have asked him if the Amber Alert system should be changed. My statement to that would be no. Uh, the Amber Alert is set up with criteria that's fairly stringent to keep that very serious. Knox fears a change could lead to people ignoring alerts. It's something we see day in and day out, people fighting, you know, take off with the kids. It happens all the time. So. I think, I think everybody did exactly what they could do with the information they had. Sheriff Eric Knox says he believes this case does draw attention to the need for more mental health outreach at the statewide level. Live in Springfield, I'm Michael Van Skoik. Thank you, Michael.